climate change poses a significant threat to farmers and to the sustainability of their output. According to optimistic lower end projections of temperature rise, a changing climate may reduce cereal yields globally by as much as 10 to 20 percent by the 2050s in the absence of adaptation. Climate smart agriculture offers real hope. For starters, it is about increasing farm productivity in an environmentally and socially sustainable way. It is about strengthening farmers' resilience to climate change and reducing agriculture's climate imprint by curbing greenhouse gas emissions and increasing carbon storage, including in the soil. Climate smart agriculture relies on the limitless genius of farmers and includes proven techniques such as mulching and developing drought or flood tolerant crops to meet the demands of a changing climate. On today's episode of Climate Smart Agriculture, we transverse across different counties to learn three climate smart techniques farmers are adopting. One such technique is hydroponics farming. Hydroponics is a method of growing crops in water rather than on soil. In this technique, plant growth and productivity is controlled by the type and amount of nutrients added to the water. Meet Emily Mugambi, an expert on all matters hydroponics. She will be breaking down for us what hydroponics is and how one can use this climate smart technique in your farm. Hydroponics has various benefits and this includes uh, use of limited space. We don't need, uh, you don't require huge uh, tracts of land for you to do hydroponics farming. And then it's smart farming, it's clean farming. We do not use soil, meaning you don't have to get dirty when you're farming. And then uh, hydroponics saves up to 80% water. So in places where there is a scarcity of water, then hydroponics comes in handy. And then there's faster growth. Uh, because of the nutrients that the crops are fed with. And faster growth means uh, shorter farming cycles, meaning a farmer can be able to recoup their investments at a faster rate. And other than that, there is increased output um, on a farmer farms. That means uh, they're able to get more returns, enough to feed their household and enough to sell to make an extra income. In hydroponics, there are various units suited for different types of crop production. One such unit is the nutrient foam technique, also known as NFT. NFT is a hydroponic technique where in a very shallow stream of water containing all the dissolved nutrients required for plant growth is recirculated past the bare roots of plants in a watertight gully, also known as channels. We have one like uh, uh, what we call the nutrient film technique. In short terms, set it, forget it. Uh, because such a unit is automated, meaning you do not have to spend um, labor on it. You just have to set your pump and water will flow through the crops and uh, you just have to come check how your crops are doing and it makes your work easier. So this particular unit is called a NFT, set it forget unit. What you do, you have to put a pump that pumps water from the storage tank into the crop and then the small black pipes feed the water through uh, the plastic cups that are holding the inert media together with the crop. So uh, when you're watering your unit, you have to put your hydroponics nutrients into the water. And then when now the pump goes on, the water flows through together with the nutrients up to the last crop. And now that water is recycled back into the reservoir tank. And that's how this particular system saves on water because the excess water flows back to the reservoir tank. And then this particular unit is good for lettuce, like what you've grown here. You can do broccoli. You can do cauliflower, you can as well do your spinach and kale. The white plastic cups you see are very crucial in this system. They hold the nutrient mixture for the plant and avoid disturbances to it 
when it's still maturing. They are to hold the media for you to be able to plant the crop because uh, the water is pumped into the pipe. So if you just put you in that media, it means it will be clogged towards one end and water will not be able to flow. So the uh, plastic cups have holes to help water seep through to gather the nutrients after the last crop. A properly designed NFT system is based on using the right channel slope, the right flow rate and the right channel length. The plant roots are exposed to adequate supplies of water, oxygen and nutrients. When it comes to flow rate, a general guide is that each gully should be at least one liter per minute. At planting, rates may be half this and the upper limit of 2 liters per minute appears to be the maximum. Flow rates beyond these extremes are often associated with nutritional problems. Depressed growth rates of many crops have been observed when channels exceed 12 meters in length. On rapidly growing crops, tests have indicated that while oxygen levels remain adequate, nitrogen may be depleted over the length of the gully. As a consequence, channel length should not exceed 10 to 15 meters. This type of system also provides the farmer with the option to intercrop. The beauty with hydroponics is that uh, you can intercrop your vegetables. Uh, for this particular system, um, you can do two lines of lettuce, two lines of broccoli, two lines of uh, say spinach. There is no problem with that because the hydroponics nutrients are universal in all the vegetables that you plant. So it's uh, depending with the need that a farmer has, she or he can always intercrop. There is no effect. Insect and mite pests are one of the biggest challenges hydroponic farmers face. When put in a greenhouse, it sets the stage for pests to survive and thrive in an environment with lots of healthy and juicy plants to feed on. Emily has, however, come up with a myriad of ways that pest and disease infestation can be combated as new generation pests and diseases start to thrive. With hydroponics, there is no, uh, there's reduced pests and diseases. So you just have to come check on the progress of your crop. So for somebody who does not have time to keep tending to their crop, then this is the best unit for them. Even though this particular unit is done outside, it does not mean it cannot be done in a greenhouse. In fact, Emily is currently conducting a study to find out if this type of farming can be done indoors with a special UV light. Hydroponics has various benefits and this includes uh, use of limited space. We don't need, uh, we don't require huge uh, tracts of land for you to do hydroponics farming. And then it's smart farming, it's clean farming. We do not use soil, meaning you don't have to get dirty when you're farming. And then uh, hydroponics saves up to 80% water. So in places where there is a scarcity of water, then hydroponics comes in handy. And then there's faster growth uh, because of the nutrients that the crops are fed with. And faster growth means uh, shorter farming cycles, meaning a farmer can be able to recoup their investments at a faster rate. And other than that, there is increased output um, on a farmer farms. That means uh, they're able to get more returns, enough to feed their household and enough to sell to make an extra income. One of the themes that Emily has touched on throughout our interview was the importance of innovating in your farm and doing it in a small way as you grow bigger. Urban farms have enormous potential to increase urban food security because more than half of the world's population lives in cities and these farms are seen as more climate resilient than traditional farms. 59 kilometers away from Givunguri, where Emily is based, we meet Alice Joroge. Alice has seen firsthand the impact that urban agriculture can have as a climate resilient farming technique. Which explains why when you enter this farm based in Mukuru Waruben, you can see a number of innovations geared towards urban agriculture. We're curious to find out what inspired Alice to start farming. Hili ni shamba ambalo lilianzishwa mwaka wa 
mbili na kumi na moja wa ba, kwa kuua tukimkumbuka Wangari Mathai. Hapo ndipo director wetu alipoianzisha. Kwa hivyo sisi tumekuwa tukifunza watu jinsi ya kulima huku kwa mitaa. Eh? Huku mitaani hapa eh, kwetu Ruben Center, Lunga Lunga Mukuru, uh, slums zingine kama Dandora, Baba Ndogo, Madare. Kwa sababu hatuna spaces na si wote tunahitaji kula mboga poa. So that's why hii family anzishwa na sisi train my youth, wa mama, wazee na hata watoto wa shule. So that's hata mtu kitoka hapa bila kukaa ido mtaani anaweza fanya kitu na pia apate mboga fresh na pia aweze kupata pesa kwa sababu akipata excess pia anaweza kauzia majirani. So ni njia moja pia ku keep youth busy, kupata ma, ma youth business pia wakuwate kusota sana wanapata kitu kidogo ambayo ni halali. Kwa hivyo sisi upanda vitu tofauti kama vile mboga uh, ukiangalia pia tuna nyanya tuna uh, skuma wiki spinach tuna hizi za kienyeji akina kanzira managu hizo zote zenye watu wanapenda na pia tuko na wanyama tuko na sungura ambao ni wa kienyeji na wale tunaitanga wa, wa, wa grade eh? wale tunaitanga mwitu na wa grade so wao pia tuko na na pia tuko na fish eh? tuko na fish wale wanaitwa uh, mad fish au ndio tuna tunalisha hapa. Na ukiangalia si lazima ukuwe na space kubwa ndio uweze kuweka hizi vitu zote. Kwa sababu kama space yetu ni ndogo sana lakini tuko na hizo vitu zote. Kwa hivyo uh, ni vizuri sisi huku hivi mtaani watu wasikae buri. Hapo hivyo kando yako kuna vile tunatengeneza ngamboga za gunia tunapanda kwa gunia. So unahitaji kuwa na mchanga, uh, ukuwe na mbolea, ukuwe na nyasi ama matawi zimekauka na pia mawe. So kuna vile unaiunda na inabeba more than 40 plants. Kwa hivyo 40 plants inaweza feed uh, family ya watu kutoka 5 kupanda mara mbili kwa kwa wiki. Kwa hivyo utaangalia eh, kama family watu watakuwa wamesave ndio ya mboga because kama saa hii matawi tano inauzwa shilingi 10. So ukiweza kusave 10 10 10 10 kwa wiki kama mara tatu hiyo ni 30 bob. 30 bob ukisave like uh, kwa mwezi mwezi uko na wiki 4. Ukiweza kusave uh, 30 mara 4, 120. Just like Alessa said, she also farms rabbits. Rabbits was a conscious decision to tap into the healthy living lifestyle that many people today are adopting. Sungura ako kwa klasi ya white meat. Sikuizi mamadoku wanasema uh, nyama poa ni white meat. Na sungura si expensive. Kwa sabu sungura unamulisha tuna zile ma, majani tuko na wazo kukwa mita. Mamamu wako na vibanda. Uka takati ya wase mboga. So zile mboga wakisha uzi wase wa mbakisha, hizo miti, zile sukuma zimearibika. So sika mayuth, hata mama, pia hii ni biashara ama mzee, una, unaenda jioni unazikollect. Then, unazikausha. Ha? Kuna pia jinsi siufu nzo watu kutengeneza solar dryer, ambayo si expensive. So unakausha zile matawi pale. Zitaka uka na upepo na hile joto kidogo hiko. Ukisha patia sungura hiyo, sungura kwa sawa, hata blot. Kwa sababu kimpatia sukuma fresh ambayo iko na maji sungura kuna kublot ni kufura tumbo. Here at the farm things are done organically. When switching from conventional farming, many farmers have a hard time to switch to organic farming due to various practices done such as fertilization, pest and disease management among others. Alice, coming from this background of conventional farming, has come up with manuati with her colleagues. Pia sisi utengeneza manuati. Manuati ni strungi ya ambayo tumetengeneza na mbolea ya ngombe. Mbolea ya ngombe ni kinyesi ya ngombe imekauka, ika decompose, ika kwa nini mbolea. Hiyo ndo si ufunga kwa gunia. Ukifunga kwa gunia, unaisoka. Una After siku seba, iko ready kutumi. Tumika. Lakini lazima uwi dilute. Ukichota kikombe moja hiyo mbolea, uneka maji, kikombe kambi. Ndiyo sasa mimia zisifanya nizi zisitomeke. Na pia ineza uzwa. Kwa hivyo, kuka kwa mtati, kusema kuna kazi, wa mama o, kushinda moshene, kuna biyashara mingi watu waneza fanya. Ha? Wakulima wanaipenda, watu wa mtapi wanaipenda, na ata mtu waneza nunua na ipeleke ushago. So, hiyo pia ni njia moja ya, ya kufanya. Kwa zile spaces, ndogo tukonazo kwa koridu.